Hey, welcome to Performance Reviews. So this was a thrift store find. Really a wonderful color. The bag's not in bad condition at all. And it came with, check this out. It came with a couple, oh, I thought it just had one. It's a couple of these vintage yellow Eureka bags, which are truly awesome. All right, well, I have the receipt showing that I paid $10.50 for this machine. And uh, upon examining these bags, not only did they get wet at some time, but these are not genuine. They're just replacements. Anyways, I'm going to use HEPA bags in it, of course. Uh, but those are interesting to have, I suppose. This is... It's got a very good sounding motor. I've already turned it on, spoiler alert. Uh, what I want to do now is the bag. The bag has to be addressed. Oh, man. Um, that is the wrong screwdriver. You know, these are Phillips on the newer ones, and not on this. Well, let's pull the rest of it apart. Um, this has the cheap plastic handle. This was definitely an Econo machine, and these have just these plastic things. You can see where one cracked, so those are getting brittle. Like, like anything else that's this old. Let's see if I can figure out how old this is. Uh, that date wheel's nonsensical. Mm, that serial number, Scott, starts with 89. I wonder if it's 1989. Though we usually nipple date these machines. So let's take a look. Nothing. Again, nothing on the housing here. That's just a blank date wheel. Real interesting. Yeah, I think that belt's been seen better days. So, uh... Well, heck, why not? We'll just step. Got some cobwebs here. Take those apart. So I went to a thrift store while I was looking for this, the one after this, and they wouldn't let you turn on the machines. So I, of course, didn't buy anything from that store. All right, so we'll just open this up, and uh -huh. maybe, man, I don't know why this one's being so, <laughs> it has a blender motor in it, as it's affectionately calls. Look at that, look at that, how intricate that is. It's gross though. Yeah, it's got this little tiny motor, and that light bulb is no good. <laughs> yeah, so that's what's inside. I think we're going to have to wash that. That's nasty <laughs> honestly i should have put gloves on looking at that <laughs> all right well well uh you guys have seen me take enough of these machines apart um yeah does this have yeah it's good it does yeah but uh we'll just uh yeah we're gonna need to get a gasket for it i think i'm out of those a couple gaskets She'll be running like new. Uh, also, somebody definitely replaced the switch at some time. Nothing wrong with that. So we'll pull those off. And the uh, hood will just pull off as well here in a second. Yeah, I think everything there should be thoroughly washed. Let's vacuum it off. All right, we'll go to the next victim. I put the bag in my front load washing machine, and then I put the rest of the machine in my dishwasher, as you can see here. Testing. All right, we're gonna put this machine back together. You notice we've kind of changed the camera angle a little bit. Um, I off camera siliconed the bag, putting a layer of silicone on that makes a huge difference in letting it dry. I also put a little bit of silicone on these, which cuts down on vibration, but still allows these things to move. Now I have with me over here, I have the blender motor. Now this assembles, I actually washed some of the, the motor components in here because they were pretty bad. Looking at this and how this goes together. This is a sleeve bearing. Um, we'll see how much play is in this. Just without any oil, you just want to see how much play. 
not a lot of play, just enough that I am going to just dab in grease and oil as a combo, which is something I've done for years. It's, it takes up the slack from the wear of lac oil, but it doesn't, uh, it doesn't make it so thick that it creates too much friction. So we're just going to do that. So just a little bit, not much. Uh, cause again, we're going to do that. The other thing you could do is some real heavy oil, like some differential oil or something is always an option. And you are actually supposed to like soak this. This thing's meant to hold it like the lifetime's worth of oil, supposedly. Uh, whether or not it does, eh, that's a, that's another fallacy of service. So we're going to put this on. And the reason we're turning this over upside down is that the oil goes into the, the, the holder for it. So that's going to go on just like that. And then it's just going to screw in there. This is a Bakelite housing, so do be careful uh, with this. We'll just screw screw in. Oh, I got a rando staple. Just put this on. Once I screw this together, we'll get the carbon brushes and the rest of this back together, but just wanted to... All right, I ended up having to use a Mila screw. Anyways, that's, that's, ooh, it's like butter. That's good. Um, next, we are going to take our screwdriver. We are gonna just put the carbon brushes back in. Uh, I would, I'm kind of old school. I always like to check the carbon brushes and when you service this particular motor, it makes it a little easier as well. Now the gasket on here is actually good. It was recently replaced looking at this and that, that was really one of the weirder things about this whole repair. And I was happy to see that. So let's put this together. Uh, and this is a short fan. And uh, just make sure anytime you do one of these fans, you have this guy. This guy goes on here. These fiber washers are really picky in terms of which way they like to be. And there's a fiber washer. And I just washed this fan again. It seems good, so why not? You know, if I can do this for my labor, I'm happy. So we'll put this on like so. All right, that's been put on hand tight. The next step is to just take a wrench and give it a little bit of a little bit of love with the wrench. Um, and it is a funky American size, uh, so. There you go, nice and tight. All right, I am super happy with all that. So now our blender gets put back and they call these blender motors because there, there was a actual blender, I guess, that shared the same internal parts. They just put a blender motor on a motor bearing plate here. All right, now. What you need is a T20, and the short one goes in this corner. Uh, if you get a long one in there, it's going to go into the fan chamber, and that's going to cause all sorts of problems. Don't do that. And then the, there's a little notch here to hold the light bulb. I happen to have an incandescent bulb for once. I'm out of my LED bulbs I usually use on these. Uh, I think the incandescent bulbs kind of look more proper to the retro as the machine. And you also the switch is missing on this particular one because they've, for whatever reason, relocated the switch. All right, I got interrupted there. Uh, so let's start putting the rest of this back together. I think the first thing you all want to do is probably, uh, the switch I blew out with compressed air. You can see where it would originally hide right there and that they at some point, somebody at Eureka thought it would be more feature rich to do this. And I, I can't personally understand this design decision, but that it was a decision that was made by Eureka at the time. Um, and when you're putting these on the plastic ones, they always, you just need to be careful not to strip them as you put them on. You don't need any Loctite or anything. Uh, just be careful when you tighten it up. You don't want to scratch the paint too much, even though this one's pretty scratched up. Just my own two cents on that. Like everything else, it's a really funky American size. Uh, 
and I, I've, I, this was made at the time where metric had become pretty standard with anything like this in our country. So it's again, it's very strange and odd uh, that it's not to me. You know, by 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 the mid '80s, uh, SAE had pretty much gone out of most American cars. So it was kind of really funny. You know, I had a '85 Dodge pickup truck that was half metric and half SAE. That was confusing. But by the time this was made, in like '91, this is 1990, 1991. This is um, completely done. Oh yeah, you can do the uh, Heco without the Heco uh, this way. So, and you'll see on the motor, there's like little places to put all the wires. There's great wire management in here. Um, so there, there is some, some sort of thought. Uh, and I, again, I don't usually do this, the bag attached in this particular case, we're going to, uh, we're just gonna put the rag on there for a second while we wire this up and then we'll put this cover on and go from there, but I don't want to scratch anything. So, uh, I don't know, you can do it however you want. But this would have been, one of these goes one way, one of them basically went the other way. Let me, whoa, this thing is just, uh, we're a little short. Give me a second here. Or was I supposed to put that on this side? No. I wanted to. It wouldn't let me. Right. Also, when you reattach these, sometimes you need to uh, file these down. Though this one looks all right. I think we'll get plenty of contact in there. And... Oh. Yeah, that's a good wire nut. So, uh, yeah, also wire, wiring this thing's up, very, very simple. So I don't need to explain that to really anybody. All right, I've got the wire nicely managed. We're going to put this thing back on, which has this thing just kind of loose in there. This was not glued. It's literally just a loose thing in there. Uh, man, I'm not sure about that. Um, kind of want to put just a little bit of tape on that to hold that in place just to keep it from rattling and enough that this gasket still works uh, maybe it will rattle still but that that's my little two cents so and this was the weirdest thing you can see which way it goes from that it's just the weirdest thing when i took it apart because i had never seen one of these with one of these still intact usually uh they were taken out and thrown out back in the day I can name several repair shops that had that policy of just taking those things out, uh, which is why I've never seen one. Well, well, that might be why. That just does not, oh, that just is wild. Ah, that's in place now. Yeah, I could see a tech getting real frustrated with that and throwing that on the wayside because look at how that 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 oh wow that just does not quite feel right now it's all settled <laughs> yeah okay now <laughs> the mystery is explained uh why that was i'm just gonna drop that in there and this is a t25 And these tops are designed to bounce loose if somebody's real rough with them. That's why the springs were used on these, if you were unfamiliar. So I'm gonna put the springs back in and that's what holds, really is gonna hold everything in place with that. Oh, just make sure my springs are clean. And when you're putting these springs back in, this particular vice script is your friend because you can clamp these, you can hold the spring, manipulate it, and stretch it on. All 
All right, got everything taken apart. You got a brush roller. I threw the whole thing in the dishwasher and uh, it had sleeve bearings, so you're gonna have to lubricate them. You give them a nice bit of oil and make sure you put back this little thing on here. And you just wanna make sure they're clean in there, basically. Not full of gunk. Mine are excellent. And then it's a 10 mil, and if you've lost your 10 mil, you can use a 3 8 uh, SAE. If you, for some reason, have a set of SAE tools laying around. Again, I know that's uh, pretty weird to have laying around these days. Right, give that, you want to give it a good healthy bit of oil. And again, these, these, these bearings will just soak it up and they'll, they're in, supposed to be impregnated is the idea. So that's nice and clean. And I appreciate you folks watching. Uh, I know it's been kind of a long one. I'll put links to the useful supplies white for doing this down below. Hopefully that will help somebody uh, as well. All right, that's beautiful. Uh, I know some of the stuff is getting kind of harder to come by. Uh, so we're going to do things a little bit backwards from how I do them. I'm going to do the belt first and then we'll do the bag. Uh, just because of the, how the machine is. Always keep your belt. Take that off. You don't want oil on your belts. Um, always, always, always put your belts in a bag so they don't dry rot. Change them about once a month. If you're vacuuming a lot, maybe every two weeks. All right, so that just goes in there, just like that. And there's a diagram right here that shows you, I'll show you, right there, shows you exactly which way the belt goes. And the belt goes in this groove right here. There's actually a groove next to that where somebody's been putting on it backwards for many, many years. Um, and then this is just gonna go on like so. All right, we are almost done here. Uh, the next step is, of course, we're going to put the handle on. This had that plastic handle in there, and I I just took the whole handle off and washed it. Now, when you're putting this back together, you need one of two things. You either need a buttload of Loctite or you need some super glue. Uh, dealer's choice with that. Um, but these screws, same with the Royal Uprights, they... They didn't come with Loctite. I don't know why they didn't put Loctite on these from the factory. And they just wiggle the wiggle loose. And number four is healthy. So this just goes in. Like so. And you wanna crimp it down. So the play is gone on the handle and then probably then some excellent you don't want to over tighten on these plastic handles because they are brittle they can break and then in my particular case we need to thread this here now if you have a metal handle you need to do this before you put it together just a, a tip with the cord right so I'm going to try and do all this on camera, kind of backwards. Um, my spring is kind of dirty. So I'm just going to wipe it down real quick. The paper towel. Now these springs just kind of roll on here. Like so. Then we want to take this bag tube and kind of just do that for a minute. Again, the spring's kind of dirty. Let me just wipe it off. We'll put that on. Just roll that all the way down. And you, you see that there's a diagram of how to do this on the bag and the zipper side of the bag faces that. Now, of course, I have some HEPA bags, so I don't have that diagram. 
I guess they figure if you have hep gone through the trouble of getting HEPA bags, you know how to put one of these on. And you can use these HEPA bags on C-style Hoover machines as well. So you want to scrunch it down as far as it goes, fold over the slack, and then do that as well. And that will just go on there. And then before we zip it up all the way, I'm just going to give the zipper just a little bit of tri-flow, which will help the zipper work for years to come. All right. Well, let's see how she sounds. What do we got? Oh, well, we only have four height adjustments on here. That's kind of cool. Maybe one other thing I want to do. Back polish. Link again below to that. that's going to go. Not going to really put a shine on this one. All right, let's see here. That's really cool. That sounds really good for the age of the machine. I'm really happy with that. Well, thanks for watching. Give this video a thumbs up uh, if it helped you out. If you really like what we're doing, check out our Patreon. I'll put a link below to that. If you just want to talk about vacuums in general, check out our Discord server. Again, link below.